Hey guys, let's kick it off. Uh, we're talking about investing in China, and there's some great investment opportunities in China, no question about it, but there's a lot of hype, and there is some merit to the hype because there is a lot of money being made and there's in enormous economic growth. But um, you want to be careful and you want to tread lightly, and you kind of want to know what you're doing here because you can also lose a lot of money. So um, let's just cover some basics first. So China has about 20% of the world's population. There is absolutely, undeniably, very impressive economic growth happening in China right now. Um, there's a huge move uh, into continued urbanization. That is to say, people living uh, less in rural areas and more urban areas are growing. So uh, that obviously leads to economic growth. And what's happening is China is opening doors to investors by giving them greater access to their stock market in an effort to receive more capital from foreign investors. Okay? So stocks are traded there on the Shanghai Stock Exchange or the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. And the reason I say be careful and tread lightly is because companies, uh, Chinese-owned companies don't really have the same kind of regulations we have here in the U.S., um, with generally accepted accounting principles and that kind of thing, in the same way our companies are are strictly um, monitored and that kind of thing. So one of the best ways, there's a couple ways to do this. If you want to invest in China, what I would recommend is you look at companies that are already owned by um, U.S.-based uh, companies like Apple, Tyson Foods, Avon, just to name a few. And these, of course, trade right on the New York Stock Exchange. Just a few more, AT&T, General Electric, Harley-Davidson. Okay, so these guys are all, they're not riding coattails because they don't have to ride coattails, but I mean, they're riding the uh, the economic wave that's happening in China. And so there are others, of course. There are uh, Campbell Soups comes to mind, Colgate Palmolive, uh, Adidas is another great company that's expanding operations in China. So you can look at these U.S.-based companies and um, and make very solid investments and still get that, you know, a, a piece of that economic growth in China as well. Another way to do this is if you prefer um, sort of a managed fund, you can look at these ETFs. And an ETF, by the way, is an exchange-traded fund. It's, it's an investment fund that trades like stocks. It's more like a mutual fund. It, it holds assets like stocks and commodities and bonds. And, but these things are great because they're very flexible, they're very low fees, and you can buy as little as one share of an ETF if you wanted to, uh, whereas other fund options require a significantly higher minimum investment. Okay, so um, ETFs is a really good way to go. Again, it's managed, and you can I buy my shares at iShares.com. And um, iShares, I, I like iShares because they follow stock exchanges around the world, and they happen to be the largest issuer of ETFs. And so you can check those guys out if you want. And if you want to do your own research, maybe look at these people, ETFDailyNews.com or Seeking Alpha, or just um, you know just get up on Google and just just do your own research. But uh, this is where you can make uh, make some pretty good money, and you're not you're kind of spreading the risk around, if you will. Now, another way to spread risk is to invest in a brick. Now, honestly, I have not invested in a brick, but uh, friends of mine have. And there seems to be a lot of good merit here as well. This is if you want to mix your investments in China with other foreign investments, okay? And what this is, that's just an acronym. It's an acronym that stands for Brazil, Russia, India, and China. Okay, so these are all sort of emerging markets overall. And it's a way to spread risk, but also still experience the possible increasing opportunities that come out of China as well as these other countries. And the reason they're grouped, by the way, is they're all at the same or similar stage of, of newly advanced economic development. Some people call them the big four. And this term brick, by the way, was coined by, I think, someone at Goldman Sachs or something, maybe whatever, 10 or 15 years ago. But... Um, but what's happening, the, the idea here is that these countries have changed their political systems and they now embrace global capitalism. So there's definite, there's definite opportunities here. I don't have any 
particular information for you. But like I said, I if you want to go with the ETFs for China only, go to iShares. But iShares would also carry some of these uh, brick investments as well. All right, so I keep these real short, sweet, and simple, so that's about it. Uh, good luck on your investing in China.